Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today at NASA Langley Research Center for a fun activity based on aeronautics. Here at NASA, we design, develop, and test advanced technologies that will make aviation much more environmentally friendly, maintain safety in more crowded skies, and ultimately transform the way we fly. Airplanes of the future may look very different from those of today. Be sure to check out some of our newest experimental aircraft on and off this planet. Now today we're going to try a unique wing shape, the ring wing. So try saying that three times fast. We're going to make and test a ring wing glider. All you need is a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, a measuring tape, and if you like a little piece of clear tape. To take this activity a step further, you may also want a few other types of paper to experiment with. Now for younger students, we have a template you can print out and use instead of a piece of plain paper. Okay, NASA challenges you to use engineering design principles to turn a piece of paper into an experimental wing for a new type of aircraft, designed to be more economical and efficient than today's airliners. Are you ready? First step, take your piece of paper and fold it diagonally lengthwise, like so. doesn't have to be perfect. For those of you using the template, you'll fold along the dashed line. Next, you'll make a half inch fold along this previously folded edge. So for me, that's about the width of my index finger. So I'm just gonna lay that down so that I get an idea of how far it needs to go. Now, if you're using the template, you'll be folding again on the second fold. So it'll be a folding over once and then folding over twice. Finally, curl the ends of the paper to make a ring and tuck one end into the fold of the other. Notice how I've kept the folds on the inside. Now, if you like, you can add a piece of tape to be sure that it doesn't come apart when you fly it. Just make sure you only use a little tape because it will add weight to your glider. In order to throw your glider, gently grasp the V between the two crown points with your thumb and index finger. Toss the glider lightly forward. You may have noticed that the folds in the paper make the airplane's front end heavy and the back end light. Curling the ends to make a ring changes the shape of the wing and improves the wing's flight performance. Okay. Once you've practiced a few flights, it's time to test. Fly your glider at least three times and record how far it went and anything else you notice about its flight. You can actually find the average distance your glider flew by adding up the three distances and then dividing by three, the number of times you threw it. Now it's time to evaluate your design. What did you notice about the flight of your aircraft? Does it repeat a pattern each time you fly it? Try making one change to your aircraft to enable a change in its flight. Then fly your aircraft several times. How did the flight characteristics change with your design change? What is the cause effect relationship between your change and the flight change? Like any NASA engineer, I encourage you to investigate other variables by keeping an engineering log of your changes and quantifying your changes by measuring them. Only change one variable at a time. Try different diameters and weights of paper, or vary the folds. See what happens and design what you think is the best glider possible. Thanks for joining me, and if you enjoyed this activity, visit NASA's Aeronautics website. And keep watching to learn more about the history of experimental aircraft at NASA. That's one small step for man. One History is about to repeat itself. Over the past seven decades, the nation's best minds in aviation have designed, built, and flown a series of experimental airplanes to test the latest imaginative and cutting edge ideas related to flight. Short wings, long wings, delta-shaped wings, 
forward swept wings. Scissor wings, big tails, no tails, high speed, low speed. Individually, each of these pioneering aircraft has its own story of triumph and setback. Together, they are known as X-Planes. Each of those X-Planes has an interesting story all of its own. They've all made an incredible contribution to our understanding of flight, and X-Planes are really cool. On October 14, 1947, Air Force Captain Chuck Yeager climbed into the bright orange, glamorous Glenis and flew the X-1 into its moment in history. The Bell X-1 was the first plane to fly faster than the speed of sound, thus breaking the sound barrier. Perhaps of all the X-planes NASA has been associated with, None was more cutting edge and became more famous than the X-15 rocket plane. The X-1, it's the most famous because it was the first to go supersonic, but the X-15, it was the most productive of our X-plane programs. Flown between 1959 and 1968, the winged X-15 reached beyond the edge of space at hypersonic speeds. Trailblazing design concepts that contributed to the development of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo piloted spaceflight programs. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. History is about to repeat itself again, and humans will take another giant leap. NASA is building a new generation of X planes. The first all electric aircraft, the X 57, will increase fuel efficiency, significantly reduce carbon emissions, and reduce unwanted noises. The newest X-Plane, the X-59, will be an aircraft that flies at supersonic speed. But instead of creating the annoying sonic boom, creates a quiet sonic thump. The X-59 aircraft is an exciting addition to a long history of X airplanes, including the X-1 and the X-15. NASA is working with Lockheed Martin to design, build, and flight test the X-59 aircraft. It's going to be about 97 feet long, fly at a Mach number of about 1.42, which is roughly around 900 miles an hour. It's got a long nose, engine on top, highly swept wings, and a very carefully shaped fuselage to enable that low boom flight that we require for this airplane. There's really three phases on the low boom flight demonstration mission. The first one is we need to make sure that the airplane is safe to fly and to fly in the United States airspace system at about 55,000 feet. Second of all, we need to do validation flights to show that the airplane can fly in a variety of flight conditions and atmospheric conditions. And then the third phase is really this community response data where we go out and get the data and provide this data to regulatory agencies such as the FAA so that they can lift the ban on commercial supersonic flight. The success of the X-59 could be the next giant leap for mankind here on Earth. This means one day in the not too distant future, you may be flying on a supersonic commercial flight over land, getting where you need to go in half the time. How cool is that? Remember, NASA is with you when you fly. <laughs>